we're going to jump over into the finance module. So here, right, this is where our general ledger resides, and we're going to start talking about the chart of accounts first here in Acumatica. So the approach that Acumatica takes when it comes to chart of accounts is it has an account field for your main account number, or some people refer to it as your natural account number. And then if you want to tag that transaction and that account with another dimension, Acumatica has what's called sub-accounts. Now, I know systems like GP, and there are others, the way their account structures are set up is it takes that main or natural account and it concatenates it together with your sub-accounts, with your other dimensions, right, that you would be able to then slice and dice your information on from a reporting perspective. The advantage of having that chart of account and that sub-account actually separated out is it does create a lot less accounts that you actually have to create and maintain in your general ledger. You're not having to go out and to create all those different combinations of accounts that use the account and the sub-accounts together like you do inside of a system like GP. Here we're seeing your chart of accounts, pretty standard, not going to take a lot of time to go over that. I think it explains itself by looking at the screen. I do want to navigate over to the sub-account screen just to give you a quick preview of that. So here's our sub-account, um, sub-accounts we're using in this demo company. It consists of a product line, which is that first segment, so the, the, um, the characters leading up to the hyphen. And then the second segment um, is a department. So you can mix and match, right, values from each of those different sub-account segments together. If you don't want to, if you don't have a value for one, you just system some prefills that with zeros. So Acumatica can have um, an unlimited number of sub-accounts. So you're not just restricted to the two that you're seeing here, nor are you restricted to the character width of three that you're seeing here. It's totally configurable where you could have four or five sub-accounts of any character length that you wish. So what does this look like when we're transacting now? So we're going to go over to a journal entry that's already been created. We're going to go to AP number 74, and we're going to look at what the um, account and sub-account combination looks like in an entry that was created. So down in the document details in that grid-like area, you're going to see the second column next to branch, right? That's what identifies our account number. So here we're seeing this entry is getting posted to accounts payable as, as well as our inventory purchase accrual account. The column next to the description is our sub-account. Okay, so here's where we see that sub-account in a separate field from our natural. And it's telling me that it's booking it to the CON product line. The zeros is an indication that, hey, it's product line specific. We didn't tag it with a department. So that's how the, your, the tagging of the sub-account looks within a transaction. If you were to key in this journal entry yourself, again, you're going to specify your account, and then you're going to tag it with a sub-account if it applies. One other thing I'd like to point out in this journal entry that I think, where I think Acumatica stands out from other ERP systems are those three columns all the way to the right. So typically what I see in most systems is you've got to look at like reports that include your journal entry information to be able to see sub-ledger information. Here, right within this journal transaction, um, we're seeing the customer or vendor, depending on what type of transaction this is, we're seeing their ID. We're also seeing the inventory items that came into play <clears throat> on this transaction. And we're seeing the AP reference number, the document number. So again, I just think that's something that separates Acumatica out from others. Of course, you can always view back into your source document by hitting that View Source Document button above the grid, and that will bring you to the actual AP bill right from the transaction. But without even having to go there, you can tell who the vendor was and what was actually purchased right from looking at the journal entry in itself. Now, one thing I want to point out before we close this form is I've been saying the word journal entry. I think us as accountants, that's a 
typical term for transactions that are created here in the general ledger. Um, what you're seeing here on this, the screen that you may have been wondering what it was is up towards the top below the module, you're seeing batch number. You're not seeing a, the word journal entry anywhere. And Acumatica, they just happen to call it a batch number, but that batch number field is what, is what most of us accountants understand to, to, to be known as a journal entry number. Just want to point that out in case you were wondering what that batch number field was up there.